Okay, so here's the good news. If I had asked you to find the derivative of the following functions up until today when we formalized these notes, what you would have had to do was you would have had to use the limit definition. Now, you don't need to write this down. I'm just showing you what you would have done before now. You would have said, okay, well, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of uh, f of x plus h. So i got to do x plus h cubed minus 4 x plus h squared plus 7 times x plus h plus 8. And then I've got to subtract. I don't have room to write it, but I've got to subtract that entire f of x function. And that's all over h. And I'm going to have to multiply x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Uh, expand that out and then combine like terms and factor and cancel and all that jazz. But now that we know these word or these rules, all we have to do is say, okay, well, the derivative of this is bring down the exponent. So 3x subtract 1 from the exponent. So that's 3x squared is the derivative of x cubed. Okay, so sorry, going back to the notation, the d over dx is that is red, the derivative with respect to x. And that's what that uh, stands for. So we went over that a little while ago, but we haven't really used that notation all that much. And so I'm going to keep mixing up notations just so that you're familiar with all of them. Um, but most of the time, I either use f prime or y prime. Every once in a while, I throw in the dy over dx. But anyways, okay, so if we're taking the derivative of this, the derivative of x cubed, okay, bring down the exponent, so that's where the 3 ends up in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, that's where the squared comes from. Okay, minus, bring down your exponent of the next term, multiply it by the constant in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. Um, huh? Uh, no, you don't have to put it in parentheses because it's just multiplication. Okay, uh, plus the... Good morning, Eagles. We've got a couple of the names. All right, uh, where are we at? We're with the 7x, right? So the exponent on the x, it doesn't really have one, so it's understood to be a 1. So you really don't have to write this out every time. Y'all get used to this um, so that you don't have to write out all this work, but I'm trying to be explicit at this point. Okay, so bring down the 1 exponent, multiply it by the 7, subtract 1 from 1, that gives you a 0 exponent. And Uh, no, the a at the end, the derivative of a constant is zero. I I'm not finished. What I I'm not quite sure what your question is. What? No. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, the exponent. The exponent comes down. The exponent comes down. The exponent is the end. So in the rule, if you look at our rule, the exponent is the end. So the end comes down. The right here, you can see the fourth side of this. Yes. Right here, there wasn't anything, so I got just the one. Okay, so we don't want to leave our answer like this. We need to clean it up. Um, so 3x squared minus 8x plus 7 is the derivative, okay? Because anything to the 0 power is 1. So that x to the 0 is a 1. So you got 1 times 7 times 1. That's how we get 7. Yes, yes. Okay. No, no. Don't worry about factoring. We will get to some problems where we need to factor, but right now, just just take the derivative. Okay, uh, let's look at one involving some different roots, a fourth root and a cube root. Okay, a fourth root and a cube root. Now, really, we wouldn't have been able to handle this uh, using the limit definition of the derivative, so we really have to rely upon our power rule here. 
okay? But that means we have to express these as a power first. So I'm going to rewrite g of x. I'm going to rewrite the fourth root as the one-fourth power. Remember power over root, okay? x is raised to the first power. It's the fourth root. So x to the one-fourth is the same as the fourth root. The cube root of x is the same as x to the one-third. Okay, so g prime of x here, the derivative of g, is bring down your exponent, subtract 1 from your exponent. And yes, you've got to be able to do this without a calculator because these questions will be on the non-calculator portion of the exam, and they love fractions. So um, 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. x to the 1 third, bring down the 1 third, subtract 1 from the exponent, so that's the negative two-thirds, and the derivative of six is zero. Now, we really don't want to leave negative exponents, so we need to move that into the denominator. Four is already in the denominator. Uh, now, you can, well, since it started in radical form, let's put it back in radical form, okay? So x to the negative 3 fourths is the fourth root of x cubed in the denominator with the 4 that was already there. Okay, one third, the 3 is in the denominator. Move the x to the negative 2 thirds to the denominator and put it back in radical form. So that is the cube root of x squared. The, the negative, yeah, the negative exponent moves it down to the denominator. One fourth minus one. One fourth minus four fourths is negative three fourths. Uh huh. Yeah, no, one half minus one. Yeah, one half minus one, so it's negative one half. Okay, let's look at this one. Y is equal to 1 over x squared. Okay, um, in order to use your power rule, that x squared must be in the numerator. So we need to write that as x to the negative 2 power. Okay, 1 over x squared is equal to x to the negative 2 power. So here's a different notation since my function was labeled as y. I'm going to label the derivative as dy over dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. Bring down the exponent. There was no constant in front. Subtract 1 from the exponent. So that's negative 2x to the negative third. It started as a rational, so we should express it as a rational. When we do that, the negative 2 doesn't move, okay? That negative 2 constant does not move. You can only move the variable that has the negative exponent. You can only move the variable that has the negative exponent. Okay, let's do a few more. f of x is equal to 2 over x. Again, we need to express that as a power. So 2 over x is equal to 2 times x to the negative first. f prime of x is negative 1 times 2 x to the negative 2. So when we clean that up, we've got negative 2 in the numerator over x squared. Okay? Only the variable with the exponent moves. The 2 does not move. Okay, f of t 
is equal to negative 4t squared over 5. We don't have to manipulate anything for this problem. Uh, it is the way it needs to be. If, you, if it really bothers you, you could write it as negative 4 fifths times t squared. Okay, those are equivalent, but you really don't, you're not moving anything. We can apply the rule as is. So f prime of t is equal to, bring down your exponent, multiply it by the coefficient, subtract one from the exponent. So when we clean that up, we get negative 8t over 5. Okay, typically, the answers need to be expressed similar to what the original function looked like. Two more, and I'm going to let y'all practice with our power rule here. y is equal to 2 times the square root of x. We need to express that square root as the 1 half power. So I'm going to use the notation y prime this time. I used dy over dx last time. y prime is the same thing, okay? So bring down the exponent, multiply by the coefficient, subtract 1 from the exponent. Well, 1 half times 2 is 1, and the negative exponent needs to move to the denominator, and the 1 half power is the square root. So the derivative of this is equal to 1 over the square root of x. Last example, h of x is equal to 1 over 2 times the cube root of x squared. We do need to rewrite this. The 1 half, nothing about the 1 over 2 changes. Okay, the x was in the denominator, so we need to give it a negative exponent to move it to the numerator. And we put power over root, so that's the negative 2 thirds power. h prime of x is then equal to bring down the exponent, multiply by the coefficient, subtract 1 from the exponent, that's negative 5 thirds. Okay, I can do that that quickly because I know that subtracting 1, I got to express that as over 3. So I got to subtract 3 over 3. So negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Okay, that's the thought process that I go through. We need to clean this up. Negative two-thirds times one-half is negative one-third because those twos cancel. One's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. Um, and that's a negative power, so I'm going to put it in the denominator. And power over root gives me the cube root of x to the fifth. Notice with all these radicals, the type of root doesn't change. Our original function has a cube root, the derivative has a cube root. Our original function has a square root, the derivative has a square root. Uh, we had a fourth root somewhere up here. Uh, we started with a fourth root, the derivative had a fourth root. Okay, the root doesn't change. So be careful when you're putting it, when you're going from power over root form to radical form, uh, that you get that in the right order and that's an easy way to check. 